I'm about to do your Virgo tarot reading for the end of April 2022, and in this Virgo love reading, we're going to take a behind-the-scenes peek at your romantic person of interest. Virgo, what is going on with you? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Virgo love reading. In today's Virgo love reading, we are going to take a behind-the-scenes peek at your romantic person of interest. So whoever it is you're romantically involved with, romantically thinking about, or just romantically, energetically connected to in some way, we're going to take a good hard look at this person and find out what's going on with them, see what you need to know about them, what your attention and your awareness might need to be brought to about this person. That way you can best navigate the situation you're finding yourself in with them. I'm going to do that by getting five cards to represent your person's energy here at the end of April 2022. And then I'm going to clarify everything with a second deck, just to make sure we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on with this person you're romantically connected to. Now, please keep in mind that this is not a personal reading. This is a general collective reading for the sign of Virgo. So it's not really even possible that this is going to resonate with every single Virgo person on the planet. And I'm also not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person the same way I would if I were doing a personal reading for you. Now, if a personal reading with me is something you're interested in, you can find all the information about my personal readings in the description and the first pinned comment right below this video. But this is a general reading, which means you just got to take it however it resonates for you. Now, regardless of how this reading resonates for you, you should still watch the videos for your moon sign, your rising sign, and your Venus sign, just because they can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And you can find the links to those videos, the info on my personal readings, the different tarot decks I'm using in this reading, information on Virgo crystals like Spirit Quartz, or Chrysocola, or any of the stuff like that that I sell in my store, these t-shirts, the coffee mugs, all kinds of fun, helpful stuff is in the description right below this video. But enough yakking, let's get on with this Virgo love reading for April 2022. And let's get five cards for what's going on with Virgo's romantic person of interest here at the end of April 2022, please. What does Virgo's attention and awareness need to be brought to about this person they're romantically connected to? That way Virgo can best navigate the situation they're finding themselves in. With this person, I got one flip over in the deck. One second here. There we are. Let's get two more. What's going on with Virgo's romantic person of interest okay, at the end of April 2022? Okay. Well, hey, come back here. One more flip over here. There you are. All right. Let's see what we got here. On the bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading is the Seven of Cups. Now, this is Scorpio energy. The Seven of Cups is about options and choices, but confusion about those options and choices. There's a lot of cups here. There's a lot of different stuff in these cups. There's a lot of different ways this situation could play itself out for your person, and they don't want to make a mistake. There's a lot of emotions involved, but the smoke, the clouds around all these cups represents that their judgment is a little bit clouded right now they're confused about what to do not one to make a mistake having a lot of emotions involved here right under that we have the knight of wands knights are action takers wands are about passion and desire so this could either be your person taking some rapid passionate action towards something they have a lot of passion and desire for like rushing off very quickly to do something here this is also sometimes a really wishy-washy in and out kind of an energy like someone who has shifting loyalty, someone who can't stay in the same place for too terribly long. They always feel like they got to run off and go somewhere else and do something else. This is sometimes referred to as the player of the tarot deck. It can be somebody who rushes in all passionately and gets what they want, and then they rush out somewhere else all passionately and get what they want there and come back and forth trying to play both sides of the fence. I'm not sure that's what's going on yet. It's possible. Could be someone has a lot of options that aren't you and they're trying to be a player here. It could just be that they're confused about what to do, what actions to take on trying to get something they're passionate about. Under that, we have the Three of Wands, which is Aries energy. This is about being at the beginning stages of manifesting something that your person has desire for. 
in the two of wands, the card right before this, they're at a fork in the road. It's like a crossroads in their life. It's a decision point about what is it that I really want for my life and which path do I need to go down to get that. In the three of wands that they're in, they've already made that decision. They already know what it is that they want. They know what they're trying to manifest and they've chosen that path and they've started taking steps down that path, having the full expectancy that the thing they want is going to happen. It just hasn't materialized in the physical reality yet. So this is an energy of them waiting on that to happen, but having a positive expectancy that it will. So that's the overall gist of what it's going to talk to me about. I might have to come back to this more as we go through the reading in order for that to make more sense to me here. In your person's actual energy here for the end of April 2022, Virgo, we have the King of Cups, the Ace of Wands, the Three of Pentacles, the Eight of Cups, and the Nine of Wands. So the good thing that I'm noticing right off the bat here is I've looked at what, eight cards now and not a single sword in sight. In a love reading, I want to see a lot of cups. Probably want to see some wands for some passion and desire. Even Pentacles aren't bad because that's like some finances, some material stability. What you don't want to see is swords, and so far we don't have any. This King of Cups is Pisces energy. Sometimes this is Scorpio energy. This is someone who has a lot of love and emotions for you. They just may not necessarily be outwardly expressing that. The King of Cups does not wear his heart on his sleeve. He doesn't publicly broadcast his emotions or how he feels about things. Even when the waters are all rough and choppy around the King of Cups, he's usually able to maintain his calm and his composure hard to tell just by looking at him or being around him that he could be in emotional turmoil here. This is definitely someone who has love and emotions for you though. Possibly not expressing it though. This is someone who's very in touch with their emotions, very in touch with their intuition, and they actually consult their emotions and their intuition when they make their decisions. They just don't let it cloud their judgment. Tell me about this King of Cups for Virgo's person please. Why is the King of Cups here for Virgo's person the end of April 2022? One flipped over. Here we go. On the bottom of the deck, Four of Wands. So this is Aries energy again. We just saw the Three of Wands here, so we're making some progress. This is about being at the beginning stages of manifesting what they want and it hasn't materialized yet. They're still waiting on it. This Four of Wands is the next step in that process. This is celebrating the thing actually being manifested in reality. These Four of Wands represent 1111, which is the number of manifesting. This is usually about stability of the home life, stability of the family life, stability of the connection between the two of you. <sighs> hmm. We have the Wheel of Fortune right underneath that. This has got a few meanings. This can represent divine timing. We saw them waiting on something. This could represent that what's supposed to happen is going to happen when it's supposed to, and there's not really anything your person can do to speed that up. This can represent that, like what's supposed to happen is going to happen, and there's nothing they can do about that. This can even represent a change in the luck and fortunes for your person. So if things have been going bad, this would be the wheel spinning the other way and now things start to go good. This could also represent a change in the luck and fortune of their stability, which could be why we're seeing them having a little bit of confusion about their options and choices. Now this can also represent like if things have been going good, they switch around and go bad or vice versa. If things have been going bad, they switch around and go good. I'm not seeing anything terribly bad right here. I don't know if this is trying to say that their thing that they want is going to happen. It's just in divine timing right now. But I've got the Three of Cups right behind that, which is Cancer energy of either being reunited and celebrating or being united to begin with and celebrating. Got more Aries energy here with the Emperor right underneath that. This is this is an energy of control. This is about taking control of the situation, taking charge of a situation, possibly putting some boundaries in place. This is a master manifester kind of an energy too. It's someone who has all the tools and all the resources to put together a plan to get what they want and then to execute that plan to get what they want. 
it's possible your person's trying to execute a plan to like change the stability and change something here to bring the stability of this connection back. Hmm. Not 100% sure what's going on with them yet. To clarify the King of Cups, we have the Two of Cups, the Four of Pentacles, and the Ace of Cups. The Two of Cups is more Cancer energy. This is a love connection between two people. This is I breathe you in, you breathe me in. We're connected, but it is a two, and in tarot, twos represent making a choice. The overall energy here is them having options and choices and being confused about what to do looks to me like they might be changing their mind about what it is that they want to do or what it is that they actually want here like this is a, a shifting kind of an energy here can't make up their mind now this can represent a choice in the love connection between the two of you it can represent a choice between two different people that they have a connection with Next, we have the Four of Pentacles. This is Capricorn energy. Fours are usually about stability. I've got a four here on the bottom of the deck. Stability of the connection of their home and family life. This can be financial stability. This is also an energy of holding on tightly to something and not wanting to let go of it. So they could have a choice between more than one person and they're feeling confused about those options and choices and switching back and forth about what they want because really they don't want to let go of either person here it could be that even again general reading so you got to take this however it resonates for you but the final clarifier for the king of cups is the ace of cups so again i'm seeing a lot of cups that's good this is a new beginning in love and emotions or it can also represent if this is a case where you guys have had some change in your connection and the stability went to shit and you weren't together anymore this can represent trying to start over in this connection at square one in terms of love and emotions. Very next card in your person's energy is the Ace of Wands. So I've got two Aces out here already. These four ones here, the Aces are the ones of the different suits. So I've got two of the four already out here. The Ace of Wands is a new beginning in passion and desire. A passion and new beginning. Tell me more about this Ace of Wands for Virgo's person, please. Why is the Ace of Wands here for Virgo's person? Uh-huh. Okay. Now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Bottom of the deck, we have the Three of Swords. This is Libra energy. This is heartbreak and sadness from a third energy. Now, that third energy does not always have to be a romantic third party, although it totally can be. Anything that we humans do enough of, anything we put enough of our time, effort, and energy into is going to have its own energy. So, for example, my business has its own energy. It affects my life. It affects my kids' life. It affects the people that I love and care about. So, this can be their career, their job, their business. This can be nosy friends nosy family members nosy neighbors anybody sticking their nose in it where it doesn't really belong this can be a geographic distance between the two of you although i don't really see anything out here that would indicate that anything that you're asking the question like well could that third energy be blank if you're asking could it be that then the answer is yes so this can be any number of different things it's just something that's not you causing the heartbreak it's not necessarily them causing the heartbreak there's some other energy involved here right under that we have the queen of wands this is usually aries energy sometimes leo energy this is a bold, passionate, fiery, determined person. Someone who knows exactly what they want. They go after what they want with bold, passionate, fiery determination. Like the Queen of Wands doesn't take any bullshit. She doesn't take no for an answer. She doesn't accept excuses. She knows what she wants. And she's going to go get what she wants. She almost always gets what she wants just because she's so determined. Now, if this is representing a person, this would be a fire sign like Aries or Leo, possibly Sagittarius. Or it would be someone who fits the description of who the Queen of Wands is. Like that passionate, fiery, determined person. Someone who's sexy, good looking, vivacious, fun to be around. She's very intuitive, hence the black cat there. Somebody who could be like the life of the party or even a drama queen in some sense. This is probably some other person here. Some third party. 
I have the Eight of Swords right behind that, Gemini energy. This is an energy of thinking about something over and over again on a repeating loop in their mind and not really being sure what the safe step to take is and feeling stuck and trapped and blocked because they don't know what the safe step to take is. That's why they're grinding on it in circles in their head, thinking about it over and over again and can't quite shut their mind off. They're definitely trying to figure something out though. The Page of Swords is next. Pages are messengers, so this can be news, messages, communications. It's also an energy of someone who's trying to learn something, trying to figure something out. Hmm. I'm thinking we may have a third party that was involved at some point. That's probably what the options and choices are and the confusion about that. There was another person here, possibly an Aries or a Leo, and they're stuck in their head grinding on it, trying to figure out what to do about that. Probably can't quite make their mind up. It probably depends on what day of the week I ask them what they're going to do. Like one day they might say, oh, I'm going with Virgo. And the next day they say, I don't know, I'm going to go with this other person here. And they keep switching back and forth on that confused, clouded judgment. It looks like we could be waiting on the world, which is the final card of the Major Arcana. It's an ending. It's the completion of one cycle and at the same time the beginning of a beautiful new cycle here. And we've got the Six of Swords next, which is an energy of moving forward into calmer waters. It's about leaving the rough choppy waters of the past behind, moving forward toward what it is that they actually want. So at its core it's about like moving away from some mentally or psychologically painful situation or a painful event, leaving that in the past where it belongs and moving forward toward what they want. But this woman with the child and all the swords in the boat represent, even though they are trying to leave something behind and move forward toward what they want, they're doing that either carrying some burdens or some lessons from their past forward with them. So they could be waiting on some cycle to come to an end here so that they can leave something behind and move forward towards something else here. got the nine of pentacles next virgo energy so they could be trying to move forward toward you virgo this is also a singles energy this is like with you or without you or in spite of you i'm single and abundant and prosperous in my own right like they don't physically need someone to take care of them they don't financially need someone to take care of them they can do that themselves this is an energy of someone who's either single or someone who's trying to move forward toward being single or possibly trying to leave something painful behind. <sighs> Ending a cycle maybe where they're in another connection here or maybe there's some painful situation that happened because they were confused and being a player and had a third party. And now they are single and they don't want to be. I have Temperance next, which is the Sagittarius Major Arcana card. It's a card of patience. I see them waiting. I saw divine timing with the Wheel of Fortune. This could be them trying to be patient. This is also an energy of reconciliation. In tarot, water and cups represent love and emotions. And here, the water, the love, has been separated into two different cups. And the angel here is recombining that. She's blending it back together. So this can be about recombining two people that were in love that split apart, reconciling the situation. I'm feeling like your person definitely has emotions for you. And it's looking like there is the at least the possibility that there's more than one person they're trying to decide between and probably don't want to let go of you or don't want to let go of either one of you. And I'm feeling more like they don't want to let go of you here. I think they probably did something stupid and broke your heart, possibly had a new beginning in love and emotions and a passionate new beginning. This is also the phallic symbol of the tarot deck. So that wand represents the male phallus and using it to be intimate. It can be about sex, sexual energy, sparking up a new connection somewhere. Also, these aces, though, can represent starting this love connection with you back over at square one in terms of love and emotions. And this can also represent trying to re-spark the passion and the desire in this connection with you after there has been some sort of a third energy and a heartbreaking situation. So this is either that third party or this is them how they're viewing you or them knowing exactly what they want and just trying to like go in circles in their head to figure out how to get it. 
which is like to re-spark this connection. To clarify that Ace of Wands, I got the Hierophant, the Five of Cups, and Judgment. So the Hierophant is the Taurus Major Arcana card. This is a card of commitment. It's about taking things to the next level from wherever they are. It's about being in a committed relationship. This is even a marriage card. That Four of Wands that we saw can also be a marriage card or an engagement card. It's looking to me like they're trying to re-spark the commitment in this connection. This Five of Cups is Scorpio energy. This is sadness and remorse about the past. You can see the person is focused on these three cups that have been spilled. That's all the love and the emotions that have been spilled out and wasted. All the time, effort, and energy that's been spilled and wasted. And that's where they have their focus. But notice there are two cups in the background that are upright and completely full. That's these two cups right here. The two of cups. The connection is still there for your person. It just doesn't have all the focus in this situation right here, right? This is a card that's about what someone focuses on literally determines what emotions they experience. So in this case, if they're focused on the past, they're going to feel the way they felt in the past. If they focus on something that they've lost, they're going to feel that loss. If they focus on something that they think is missing from their life, they're going to feel that gap in their life. So this is about them needing to control their focus because there is still a connection here. I think this is also representing them having some sadness and remorse, possibly some guilt around having this third energy involved, around the heartbreak that happened. I mean, there's two cards that really mean like pretty big time sadness here, and that's what both of these are. Got them both. The final card we have to clarify this Ace of Wands is Judgment. This is a fire sign energy. This is a final decision being made here. This is about passing a final verdict and judgment on something. Most of the time, this is a final decision about are we going to call this dead and over with or are we going to resurrect this? Are we going to call it back from the grave, bring it back to life and transform it in a way that it's never going to be that way again? This is reconciliation energy too. So sitting right next to this reconciliation energy is this energy of starting back over at square one. Next to this sadness and remorse and possible guilt about the past is this four of pentacles of not wanting to let go, not wanting to lose you. And sitting right next to the Hierophant, the commitment, taking things to the next level, being in a committed connection, is the Two of Cups. So it's looking to me like this is your person being confused about how to get what they want here. Which is to re-spark this connection and get the commitment back with you, to put this thing back together. The central card in your person's energy for April 2022, Virgo, is the Three of Pentacles. This is more Capricorn energy. This is an energy of teamwork, collaboration, working together as equals to build something of value. The thing that you would be working together as equals to build here is the Ten of Pentacles. That Ten of Pentacles is maximum stability, maximum abundance and prosperity. It's the combining together of two people or two families and all their assets and resources to build some stable, happy, abundant, prosperous home life that we all want. Now, it's not that. This is just the energy of working together as equals to build that. Tell me about this Three of Pentacles for Virgo's person, please. Why is the Three of Pentacles here? Virgo's person. Let's get one more on that, please. Okay, we'll take two. Hmm. Okay, I'm being told I have those in the wrong order. So we'll switch them around. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Hanged Man. This is Pisces energy. This is progress being halted. No forward movement happening. Things being stuck, stagnant, stuck right where they are. In terms of this teamwork and collaboration and working together as equals to build something, there is no progress on that for your person right now. That's what they're wanting, but that's not what they have. Now, the Hanged Man is hanging upside down because he's trying to look at things from a different perspective than he normally would look at things from. He's trying to gain enlightenment on something so he can figure out how to get this unstuck and how to move forward from here. 
I did see an energy here. Maybe it was on the bottom of the deck when I clarified the King of Cups of them trying to figure something out and kind of being stuck in their head grinding on it. That's probably what they're trying to figure out, how to get this unstuck so we can get back to the stability of this connection. That's what they're trying to manifest here. Again, this can be an engagement card. It can be a marriage card. It can be a celebration in the home think they're trying to get the stability back here under that i've got another capricorn energy the two of pentacles so so far i've seen the the three of pentacles the four of pentacles and now the two of pentacles these are all three of the capricorn minor arcana cards here you could be dealing with the capricorn you could be dealing with a pisces or a cancer or a taurus or a scorpio or a fire sign I got some pentacles here, Taurus, Libra, let's see, Taurus, Taurus, Pisces or Scorpio again, Pisces, Sagittarius. You could be dealing with any of those signs. Hell, you could literally be dealing with any sign. This is a general collective reading for Virgo. It's going to be almost impossible for me to nail down exactly who you are dealing with because I'm not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person. I'm tapping into the collective Virgo energy. So I'm just going to call out all the signs as they stick out to me just in case that means anything to you. But this Two of Pentacles is Capricorn energy. It's a one foot in, one foot out energy. It's a, it's a card of balance, but it's more about your person trying to maintain their balance or trying to regain their balance after their balance has been thrown off. You can see the water in the background is all big waves in it. It's rough and choppy. That represents their emotions being rough and choppy, their emotions throwing them off balance, they're physically off balance, and they're weighing their options here. Overall energies, options and choices and confusion about what to do, and right under that is a wishy-washy, can't make up their mind kind of an energy. This is also can't make up their mind kind of an energy. It's a two. It's a decision point here. And it's a decision where they're looking at the pros and cons between two pretty much opposite things like do I or don't I? Should I or shouldn't I? Will Virgo take me back? Won't they take me back? It's them being off balance and not sure what to decide here. Right under that is the Nine of Swords. This is Gemini energy of fear, worry, and anxiety. It's thinking about something over and over and over again with all that fear and worry behind their thinking and doing that to the point where now it's physically stressing them out. This is a card where the person has their face buried in their hands because they don't want to face the situation they're in. It feels that bad to them. This is a card of mental anguish. <sighs> Queen of Cups. Okay. This feels like how they're viewing you. We see them in their very first card in a person's energy is always the most important. Their first card is the King of Cups. Having all that love and emotions for you, but not necessarily expressing that. They're viewing you as the counterpart to them, the Queen of Cups. So this would be counterparts. This would be a power couple. These are two cards that are supposed to be together, which would represent two people who are supposed to be together, at least in terms of how your person is viewing the situation. This is someone that has a lot of love and emotions and wants to give their love and emotions here. I'm feeling like they hurt you though. The Queen of Cups has a lid on her cup and she does that because she's protecting her emotions. She doesn't want anything to contaminate her emotions, to get in her emotions and throw them off because she's been hurt before. So she, she's already experienced that, which is why she keeps a lid on the cup to stop that from happening again. Aries energy of the Emperor down here, taking control, taking charge trying to put together a plan to get what they want and execute the plan to get what they want, which seems to be getting you back and having the teamwork back with you. And I think they're really stuck in their head and worried about whether it's going to happen or not. Got the wheel of fortune here. This is like what's supposed to happen is going to happen and there's not really anything they can do. And it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. I think they probably also did something to change the luck and fortunes of your guys' connection here. And I think they're trying to re-change that. They're trying to spin the wheel back the other way so that we can have this Three of Cups cancer energy of being reunited and celebrating. So I've seen quite a few threes. I've seen this a couple of times. I've seen the Three of Wands. I've got the Three of Pentacles, which I'm clarifying now. Ah, 
saw the three of swords even a minute ago so we've literally seen all the threes of the four suits and i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself but well here we'll just do it this way first clarifier for the three of cups is or excuse me the three of pentacles is the seven of pentacles and then i've got the three of the major arcana the empress the six of pentacles and then the king of cups again so this seven of pentacles is Taurus energy. This is a period of time where your person is pausing to reflect and take stock of the connection between the two of you, take stock of the situation they're finding themselves in. And what they're doing is looking at the seeds that have been planted between the two of you. And they're trying to decide, is this worth investing in? Is this worth continuing to put my time, effort, and energy into or reinvest my time, effort, and energy into it? Is this going to grow into the Ten of Pentacles that they really want? I alluded to that already with the Three of Pentacles and what you're working together is equals to build is the Ten. Is this going to happen? Is it going to turn into the Ten? Or maybe I should just cut my losses and move on. So this is that period of time where they're pausing to reflect on and ask those types of questions about the connection and the situation. But then we've got the three of the major arcana, the Empress. She rules over all the threes of the four suits, and we've seen all four of them already. When someone is at this beginning stages of manifesting what they want, and it hasn't materialized in the physical reality yet, and they're still waiting on it to happen... She is the energy that it gets birthed into reality through. She's the gateway between the universe, the divine spirit, source, God, however you choose to look at that. She's the gateway between that and this physical 3D reality that we live in. She's the mother of the tarot deck. She's perpetually pregnant. So she's always giving birth to something new. So she represents the birth of something new. She represents the gateway through which that new thing they want can get birthed into reality. I think that's what they're doing is they're taking time to reflect on is this ever going to happen or not. It seems really stuck to them right now. They want to manifest it. I just don't know if they think it's going to happen or not with these. Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen and them being worried about it. Probably because they know they hurt you at some point here. Now, let's see. Next card to clarify that Three of Pentacles is the Six of Pentacles. This is more Taurus energy. This is usually an energy of balance. It's about trying to balance the situation between the two of you back out. This is like generosity, reciprocity. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. You take care of me and I take care of you. This is usually a card of equal give and take. So I'm clarifying a card of working together as equals... Now I've got a card of equal give and take. Now another meaning to this can represent the merchant, which would be your person in this case, giving to two. As in they had you and they had somebody else. They had some other option. They were probably going back and forth between the two options, possibly being a player, possibly starting a new love connection, a new passion connection, have a choice between two different people here. And now they're having sadness and remorse about what happened between the two of you because it looks like the wheel spun and things went to hell in a handbasket. That's probably why that happened, but this is them wanting to balance it back out. That's the thing they're trying to birth something new is balancing it out. Also, right next to the balance card is the card of the judgment. So they could have had a judgment passed on them by you because they were giving to two, because they started a new love somewhere else. And this is them trying to balance it back out so this connection can be resurrected and brought back to life. And you guys can start back over at the beginning in terms of love and emotions again. The final card to clarify this Three of Pentacles is that King of Cups, which again is their first card in their energy here. Pisces or Scorpio energy, someone who has a lot of love and emotions for you. Possibly someone who is emotionally going through the shit right now. You just can't tell by looking at them. Could be they're not expressing their emotions to you. They're not telling you how they feel. They're kind of keeping that to themselves. Not publicly broadcasting it. But regardless of what they're saying or not saying, they definitely have the feels for you. The next card in your person's energy for the end of April 2022, Virgo, is the Eight of Cups. This is Pisces energy. This is an energy of detachment, like emotional detachment or physical detachment, physically walking away. 
the person on the card is walking away from eight full cups of love because they're not completely happy and content with what they have. They believe there's something better out there for them. So they're making the difficult but conscious choice to walk away from the eight cups that they have to go off down a brand new path to search for the ninth and the tenth cup, what they believe would bring them emotional happiness and fulfillment. So sometimes this can be an energy of like, that grass is greener on the other side of the fence syndrome where the person thinks, well, this might be a better option for me. And they just, they have to go see if the grass is greener on the other side. And what people almost always find out is that the grass isn't greener on the other side of the fence. It's greener where you water it, where you nurture it. So a lot of times they realize after they leave, oh damn, this isn't all it was cracked up to be. So then they try to come back. And that looks like what's happening here. Now, this could also be a case that your person is feeling this detachment energy because you had to emotionally detach and maybe you physically walked away from them because they had too many options. That could be why things are stuck and why they're worried and stuck in their head about, is this ever going to happen? Can we rebirth this? Can we balance this out? Can we bring this back to life? So tell me more about this Eight of Cups for Virgo's person, please. Why is the Eight of Cups here? That one, thank you, for Virgo's person. That one jumped out and did a complete 360 and landed back in the deck. I see. I see. Yeah. On the bottom of the deck, three of swords, Libra energy, heartbreak and sadness from the third energy. That third energy caused a severing in this connection, the ace of swords. And now I think your person is wanting to fight for this connection. This seven of wands is Leo energy. It's a card of being defensive about something like defending their position, defending their stance on something, being willing to fight for what they believe in, fight for what they desire, fight for this connection with you after it's been severed. I think this detachment here is a dual meaning. I think it's when I said it could either be like they walked off to see if the grass was greener on the other side. They had a third party they had to go check out. I think it is that, but I also think it's also representing the fact that you detached from them because that's what they did. It's probably both of those things simultaneously. To clarify this Eight of Cups, I have the Knight of Swords, the Moon, the High Priestess, in the two of wands this knight of swords is the fastest knight in the deck knights are action takers so this is about rushing forward and taking a rapid very decisive action on something the knight of swords is fast moving he comes rushing in and he does something and then he rushes back out takes care of business and gets the hell out of dodge this is not the dude who comes rushing in all fast and then has to sit down and read the instruction manual to figure out what to do. This is somebody who just comes in and does it and then they roll out and they don't even think about it. They just do it and they don't start thinking about it until after it's already done. So I think that's what's happened. Your person made some very spontaneous decision here, some very poorly thought out thing that they did where they started something new somewhere else. I think they just decided, oh, I think I am going to detach here and go see if the grass is greener on the other side. And then after the fact is when they started thinking about it, realizing, oh, maybe it's not quite as good as I thought it was going to be. The very next card we have is the moon, which is more Pisces energy. I feel like I've said Pisces quite a bit too. The moon is fear, worry, anxiety. It's also a feeling of something being hidden in the dark, like something that they can't see yet, something they don't know about yet. It can even represent a secret being kept. It can even represent that they can't see if they're still on the correct path or not here. Like, maybe I took a wrong turn, maybe I did the wrong thing, and they're having fear, worry, and anxiety because now they don't know if they're still on the correct path. They don't know if they made a wrong turn. They don't know if they should like stop and turn around and go back. So this can just represent the uncertainty of all of that and feeling fear, worry, and anxiety about that. I'm getting the strong feeling, though, that your person had secrets that they were keeping from you. Because the very next card is the High Priestess. 
in and of herself, she can represent something that's unknown, something you don't know about, something they don't know about. She can represent a secret being kept. Whenever I have both of them together, even if I have them both together in the same reading, it's almost always a case where there's something going on that you didn't know about. These are like actually touching, came out right back to back. So there's definitely something that was being kept from you, some sort of a secret that was being kept. And it's also probably a case where you're so intuitive that you knew just instinctively, like your intuition told you something's fishy here, something's not right, gut feelings told you that, maybe you had dreams with messages, signs, synchronicities, just divine guidance on that. This is she who knows. So, I mean, this is, she sits in front of the veil of consciousness, so she knows everything, she sees everything. She just doesn't always tell us everything, which is where the intuition comes in. She clues us in that way. And I have the Two of Wands here, which is Aries energy. It's a fork in the road. It's a crossroads. It's a decision point about which path leads me to the world that I really want and which path do I need to leave behind to get there. Now, if I back up a little bit, I think what happened is your person chose to walk away to go see if the grass was greener with this third party. That led to a severing of your connection. And then after they took that action, they didn't think through very, they're very well first. After the fact, they started thinking about it. And then they started getting, oh, like, oh, maybe I made the wrong move here. Maybe I went down the wrong path. Maybe I screwed this all up. And then they decided they wanted to start fighting for the connection again. The, the high priestess in a love reading can represent that this connection, at least in terms of how they're viewing it, is deeper than just something physical. It's deeper than just something emotional. This can be a very powerful, almost spiritual type of a connection. I do have the Hierophant out here at the same time. These are kind of counterparts a little bit. Really, the correct counterpart for the High Priestess is the Magician. She's card two, the Magician's card one. But these are kind of counterparts too. So I think they started feeling guided to come back to you. Like I said, this is the person who chooses to walk away. But oftentimes, they, they do that with uncertainty and some hesitation. And then they change their mind and try to come back. And I think that's what happened. They're looking now. It's like, oh damn, the... I don't know if I went down the correct path here or not. And I think when they did all of this, it caused a severing between the two of you because it was a heartbreaking thing. Yes, they involved another person, probably, and it broke your heart. But then at the same time, now that they've thought this through, I think it's heartbreaking to them too. I see the sadness and remorse and possible guilt around what they did here. And the judgment that that led to that that's what led to the severing of the connection it seems like the final card in your person's energy here at the end of april 2022 virgo is the nine of wands this is sagittarius energy this is a card of being walled off and defensive about something now it's also a card of healing this is the wounded warrior and he's been hurt hence the wall that he's built around himself he builds the wall because he's been hurt and he doesn't want to get hurt anymore. He doesn't want to continue getting hurt. He wants to heal so he can get his energy right and take the next step in his journey. So this could be that your person is very uncertain here about what your decision is going to be. I do see them like taking time to reflect on this and asking questions like, is this going to pan out or not? Is this going to be able to be rebirthed? Can we rebirth the balance in this connection and re-spark this connection and the commitment and bring this back to life? I see all those types of contemplating things here. It's probably feeling like a wall that's in the way of them getting what they want, which is probably where some of this confusion is coming from. This can also represent that they now are aware of, but clearly they're aware of, they have sadness and remorse and guilt about hurting you, about bringing your walls up when they did hurt you. So, which can also be a wall in the way for them. Tell me more about this Nine of Wands for Virgo's person, please. Why is the Nine of Wands here? Let's get two more on this Nine of Wands. On the bottom of 
the deck. The Emperor, Aries energy, control, like taking control of a situation, taking charge of a situation, putting boundaries in place. This could be actually your energy showing up here. This could actually be another card that has a double meaning. Your person could be trying to take control and put together a plan to get what they want, which is getting you back, and then trying to execute that plan to get you back. This can also be an energy of someone who is in control, who is putting up a wall because they've been hurt. This could be you being in control. This could be you setting boundaries on them, hence that wall. <sighs> Clearly, it looks like to me that they're wanting you back and they're wanting a decision to be made on that. And they have fear, worry, and anxiety because they can't see what's going to happen. I feel like this is, yes, they're trying to take control to get what they want, but this is also you actually being in control of this, you being the one that's setting the limitations here. It definitely is you because right behind that is that Queen of Cups that I saw earlier that felt like you. Again, King of Cups is already out here twice. So this is your person's energy. This is your energy. They're viewing you as their counterpart again. So... This is also telling me that you have been hurt, hence your wall being up, which means you are the one who is the emperor here. You're setting boundaries. You're putting up the walls because you've been hurt. <sighs> yeah, things are definitely off balance. Capricorn energy of trying to maintain the balance, trying to regain the balance, the emotions being choppy and going back and forth on some decision. Like, will Virgo take me back? Won't they take me back? Should I ask? Should I just walk away and forget about it because I hurt him too bad? This can also represent juggling two people, which could be why the wall came up to begin with, why boundaries had to be set to begin with. I think this is them being unsure if they can get past your wall, if they can get past your control of the situation. And there's the fear, worry, and the anxiety again, thinking about it, a lot to the point that it's stressing them out what they're thinking about a lot is that four of wands the stability of the connection between the two of you stability of the home and the family life being able to celebrate the thing that they actually want actually finally showing up in the physical reality I think they're internally conflicted about that the five of wands is Leo energy this is like an internal conflict in their desires it's probably like a a thing where a piece of them believes it will happen and another piece of them believes that it won't happen and they can't quite again can't quite make up their mind they're confused they're back and forth on that and they're definitely waiting on the ending of a cycle here and the beginning of a new cycle where the past can be left in the past and they can move forward toward their virgo and toward reconciliation and putting this all back together. That's what it's looking like. Now, the actual clarifiers for this Nine of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune again, there's the World again, and the Ten of Wands. The Wheel of Fortune is divine timing going to happen when it's supposed to happen there's nothing they can do to speed it up or slow it down what's supposed to happen is going to happen and they're not even in control of that you're in control of that this can also represent a change in the luck and fortune here where if things have been going bad and it looks like they did and the walls are up and every and there's hurt and trying to protect yourself here this could be a change to that where now maybe the walls start to come down i'm not sure i think that's what they're hoping for next we have the world which again is the last card of the major arcana it's the ending of a cycle and the beginning of a new cycle so if we're having a change to the cycle that's happening i got two cards in a row two powerful cards in a row about that this could be saying the walls coming down and a new cycle can begin. If things were going bad, they could be turning around that bad cycle ending and a new cycle beginning here. Could be, I mean, the very center card in the entire reading is the Empress, the birth of something new or the rebirth of this connection. 
The final card to clarify the Nine of Wands is the Ten of Wands, which is more Sagittarius energy. This is a heavy burden that your person is carrying here. It's also a Ten, which represents completions, just like this can represent the completion of a cycle and the wheel spinning and starting a new cycle, the ending of a cycle, the beginning of a new cycle. This is also a completion. This Wheel of Fortune is card 10 of the Major Arcana, so it rules over the tens of the four different suits here. One of those tens is this Ten of Wands. So again, the completion of the cycle, three cards in a row about completing some burden, being at the spot where the burden can be laid down and move forward without it here. Now we're also making progress here because the first card that I'm clarifying is the Nine of Wands and we're ending with the Ten of Wands. We're going sequentially here. We're making progress from the Nine to the Ten. So it looks like progress is happening. It's not happening fast between the two of you. I think they want it to happen a lot faster than it is and they're waiting on it here. I think we're doing this like one step at a time nice and slow i see two different spots in the reading at the beginning here where we went backwards from the two to the one and then in the center of the reading i see we went backwards again from the seven of pentacles to the six of pentacles but now here at the end i'm seeing progress happening we're seeing going from the nine to the ten moving forward here Ending a cycle, beginning a new cycle. I think your person screwed up at some point in the past. Now they regret it and they're trying to get you back, Virgo. Now, if you still have questions you want answered about this situation or your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Virgo love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.